Hello guys, good evening to everyone. To the ones that are already here, welcome. And the other ones that are Hello, connecting throughout the session, welcome too. So let's see, um, let me ask you a question. Can you hear me? Can everyone listen to me? My teacher se le oye really? Oh my God, we're still having the same problem, I can see. So, um, well, let me just try to check what I have here. So just give me one second. Check. All right. So can everyone listen clear right now? Or still we have interference? Yes. Si todos se escuchan bien, right? Yes. Sí, hoy sí. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so we're just, uh, we're just gonna see uh, if your classmates connect throughout the session. So as usual, guys, I'm going to ask you questions regarding to the last topic or to the previous topic. So yesterday's class was about, what, what was yesterday's class about? Can someone tell me? Demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns, correct. And which are they? These. Okay. This, those, and. Wow. Okay, thank you very much. So if I have that, what is the plural of that? Those. Those, correct. And what is the plural of these? This. Correct. Yeah. So um, what is the difference or how do we know or what is the difference that we have between this and that? Do we have any difference? Yes, then this is when the object is near. Near, okay. And that when the object is far. Correct, thank you very much, Julio. So I guess, well, I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that every one of you knows the same information. So uh, let me see. I had uh, an exercise here, so I was just gonna show you. So just let me double check here. So before we move on, guys, let me tell you that tomorrow, of course, we're, we're not having classes, okay? Because it is Independence Day. But due to the fact that the president announced that we are also having a day off on Friday. Um, we are still waiting for, we're still waiting for the answers from INSA4, okay? So uh, in case they say something, in caso INSA4 nos haga saber algo, eh, se lo vamos a hacer saber. ¿Por qué? Porque la clase del día de mañana Oh, okay, let's, let me try to repeat. So, tratar de explicar. Okay, thank you for letting me know, uh, Julio and Oswaldo and Elena. Okay, um, como les estaba diciendo, chicos, el día de mañana se supone que tenemos class, right? We have class. But since it is Independence Day, el día de la independencia is a day off, es día libre. So, La clase que teníamos para el día de mañana se había calendarizado para día viernes. But, according to the president of El Salvador, Mr. Najib, we have also Friday as a day off. También tenemos el día viernes como día libre. So, in case, en este caso, eh, estamos esperando instrucciones de INSAFOR. Eh, 
Well, I don't know, it, it cut off again. Hello? Si todos escucharon lo que dije? It's cutting off again. I don't know what's going on. Hello? Hey. Well, I guess it's cutting enough again, guys. Well, it's, I'm sorry, guys. Probably it's because uh, in the place where I live, it's raining. Probablemente sea porque acá ha estado lloviendo, so the internet connection is not okay. Pero lo que les estaba diciendo es que estamos esperando confirmación de INSAFOR para ver si la clase siempre la recibiríamos el día viernes o quedamos tentativos a, a cualquier información. So, in case something happens, I will let you know through the WhatsApp group. Si algo sucede, se los voy a hacer saber por el grupo de WhatsApp, ¿ok? Great. So, okay. that's the information that I have. Esa es la información que tengo hasta el momento. So uh, we're going to move on with today's class, okay? So uh, let me share the screen with you today. And for today, we're gonna have, just let me check here. Have you ever heard guys of prepositions? Alguna vez han escuchado de prepositions or when you listen to the word prepositions, cuando escuchan la palabra prepositions, does anyone have any idea? Any idea what a preposition is? Or do you know what a preposition is? Any idea? Ideas? No? You have never heard. Nadie ha escuchado antes de preposiciones. Well, if you haven't. If you haven't, so actually today is uh, is the day where we are going to try to understand or to learn about prepositions. So guys, prepositions, there's a lot of prepositions that we have in the English language, but today we are going to focus on three of them. We're gonna see three. Which are our days? Prepositions of time, prepositions of place, and the last one are going to be general prepositions, okay? So we are going to go one by one to see what we have. So the first one, here we have prepositions of time, preposiciones de tiempo, prepositions of time. So first of all, Nos vamos a enfocar, we are going to focus on at, in, on. So we are going to try to understand how to use them. So tratar de entender cómo utilizar. So we're going to move on to this part. And here we have a general information. Aquí tenemos cómo la usamos. So we're going to start with at. Cómo utilizamos at. Every single time, cada vez que usted hable de tiempo exacto, lugares exactos, like, um, for example, horas exactas, precise time, tiempo preciso, precise time, that's what we call them. We are going to use at, for example, supongámonos que Julio y yo vamos a tener una reunión. Tenemos una reunión and we say, and I tell Julio, y le digo a Julio, Julio, I will see you at three o'clock. Te voy a ver a las tres en punto. Why? Porque estamos hablando de un tiempo preciso. Yo ya sé que a esa hora va a empezar. So that's why we're going to use at, okay? Because we're talking about a precise time, un tiempo preciso. So we have at three o'clock. We have at 10.30 a.m. We have at noon. We have at dinner time. We had a time bed, at sunrise, at sunset, and at the moment. So those are just examples of some uh, 
using the preposition of time at. So now, is there any word of this vocabulary that you do not understand? Hay una, alguna palabra de esta primera parte que no entiendan? Vocabulary or something or is clear? I'm sorry. Sorry, something? Hello? At dinner time. At, at noon? Oh, okay. When, yes. we noon, when we say at noon, we refer to, nos referimos al mediodía, at noon. At noon. En lugar de decir a las doce, we say at noon, mediodía, so automatically we know that we're talking about twelve, las doce. So when we say dinner time, nos referimos a la cena, dinner time. And when we said bedtime, nos referimos a la cama, ¿sí? Como a dormir, a, di, a bedtime, hora de dormir. So uh, the others, I think that is clear. So if we're going to move on now to in, ¿cómo utilizamos in? So... When we talk about, cuando hablamos de months, years, decades, centuries, and seasons. Cuando hablamos de meses, años, décadas, siglos, y temporadas. So every single time, cada vez que hablemos de eso, Para referirnos al tiempo, we are going to use the preposition in. And we have some examples right here. For example, in May, en mayo, in summer, en verano, in the summer, en el verano, in 1990, en 1990, in the 19s, en los 90, in the next century, El próximo siglo. In the ice age. En la era de hielo. In the past. En el pasado. In the future. Okay. So here we have some common examples using in. Okay. Remember. Recordémonos. Meses, años, décadas, siglos, and temporadas. Okay. So. Any question? Preguntas? Well, I'm going to take the silence as a no questions. So, we, we are going to move on now to on. How or when are we going to use on? We are going to use it when we refer, cuando nos refiramos a días, Y fechas específicas o fechas. For in general, I mean. For example, if I want to say, si quiero decir el sábado, yo voy a decir on Sunday. El martes o los martes on Tuesdays. El 6 de marzo, on March or on 6 March. 25 de diciembre, on 25 December 2010. Cuando me refiero al Navidad, on Christmas Day, or el que vamos a tener mañana, on Independence Day. Okay? On my birthday, en mi cumpleaños, on New Year's Eve, en Año Nuevo. Okay, so according to this, this is the way that we have to use prepositions of time. Recuérdese, estas son prepositions of time, preposiciones de tiempo. Okay, so do you guys have any questions so far? So far, so good? Todo bien hasta el momento? Yes. All right, so just let me move on then. And here we have some other examples. In this case, I will need your help. And I need Elena Cortez to help me read in the first one, Jessica Hernandez number two, Oscar Tomasino number three, uh, Julio number four, 
Francisco, number five. Beatriz, number six. Oswaldo Stanley, number seven. Wilfredo Agonel, number eight. Jose Luis Castaneda, number nine. So let's go, please. Elena, you're the first one. I have a uh, making at 9 a.m. Okay, I have a meeting at 9 a.m. Tengo una reunión a las 9, okay? Thank you very much, Elena. Now let's go with Jessica. The shop close at midnight. Okay, the shop closes at midnight, okay? La tienda cierra en la medianoche. Thank you very much. Oscar, number three. Jane went home at lunchtime. Lunch time. Okay, Jane went home at lunchtime. Thank you very much. Who got number four? In, in England, it often snows in December. Okay, in England, it often snows on Dece in December. Inglaterra, muy a menudo neve en diciembre. Thank you very much. Now let's go with number five. Do you, do you think we will go to Jupiter in the future? Thank you very much. Do you think we will go to Jupiter in the future? Thank you. Now let's go with the next one. I guess it's Beatrice. There shall be a lot of progress in the next century. Okay, there should be a lot of progress in the next century. Debería haber mucho progreso en el próximo ciclo. Thank you very much. Now let's go with the next one. Do you work on Mondays? Do you work on Mondays? Remember, guys, entonation de las preguntas, okay? Entonación. Trabajas en los lunes? Trabajas los lunes? Do you work on Mondays? Now, let's go with the next one. Yes. Okay. Here, by this is all 20 number. Okay. Her birthday is on 20 November. Thank you very much. Now let's go with the last one. Where will you be on the news your day? Thank you. That was a good intonation. Thank you very much. All right. So these are just examples, guys. Once again, using at, using in, and using on. Okay. What are those? ¿Cómo le llamamos a estas prepositions? Yeah, I mean, preposition of time. Preposition of time. All right, so now let's move on. Now we're going to go, nos vamos a mover a las prepositions of place. Preposiciones de lugar. What does it mean? Que significa la que yo voy a utilizar para decirle a alguien que está en algún lugar. So, anything. Prepositions of place. And here we have some examples. Aquí tenemos algunos ejemplos. Behind, front of, between. But now, let's, now, let's see. Vamos a ver. What does in front of mean? ¿Qué significa? Juan Peñate. Okay, no problem, Juan. Thank you. What does, what's the meaning on of in front of? ¿Qué significa? Enfrente de. So, cuando yo quiera decir en frente de, I'm going to use in front of. Repeat it. La voy a decir una vez más, repítala en casa. In front of. No front siente of. que la puede decir así tan rápido, diga in front of. In front of. Rápido, in front of. Okay? So, it's up to you. All right. So here we have some examples. Aquí tenemos otros ejemplos. We have four. Can I have a volunteer? 
Can I have a volunteer? Si no hay voluntario, lo vamos a hacer democráticamente. And let's go with Jessica. Yo. Then we go with Beatriz. Jessica ah. or Beatriz. The teacher is sang in front of the student. Okay. Thank you, Beatriz. Jessica, number one. A band plays their music in front of an audience. An audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, let me see. Um, uh, let me see. Rebecca de Benavides, number three. The men standing in the line in front of me. Mail back. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And one question. Now that you're here with us, help me with number four. Yeah, just try. Solo trata. When I get normally sweet, they sit in front of a mirror. Okay. Thank you. Now, let me see. In number one, it says a band plays their music in front of an audience. Una banda toca su música en frente de una audiencia. Number two, the teacher stands in front of the students. El maestro se para en frente de los estudiantes. The man standing in the line in front of me smells bad. El hombre que está parado en la línea frente a mí huele mal. Smells bad. Number four, teenagers normally squeeze their zits in front of a mirror. Adolescentes, los adolescentes normalmente sacuden su cabello en frente de un espejo. So, and here we have the last example, which is the dog is in front of the man. El perro está enfrente del hombre. Okay, so once again, when you want to say enfrente de, you already know how to say. We're going to say it in English in front of. So we're going to move on to the next one. And here we have behind. What does it mean? Que significa atrás, behind, behind, okay? So every single time, de ahora en adelante, si usted quiere decir atrás, Remember, in English, we say behind. So as it says here, behind is the opposite of in front of. Behind es lo opuesto de in front of. It means at the back part, en la parte de atrás of something, okay? So here we have some other examples, and I would like to have uh, Oswaldo Stanley. Can you please help me reading this one right here? When, when the teacher write on the whiteboard, mm -hmm. the student, the students. This one here too? Are begging him, the students are begging him or her. Okay, thank you. Remember this one, the pronunciation of this preposition of play is behind, behind, okay? So we say, when the teacher writes on the whiteboard, cuando el maestro escribe en la pizarra, the students are behind him or her. Los estudiantes están detrás de él o ella. Okay. Thank you very much, Oswaldo. Can I have a volunteer? Volunteer? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Julio, is that you? Hey. Who's that okay. person behind the mask? Okay. Who's that? Who is that person behind the mask? ¿Quién es esa persona detrás de la mascarilla o máscara? Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, Beatriz, can you help me, Beatriz, with number three? Um. No sé cómo se pronuncia. Just say it. Solo dila. 
I lastly don't because there was a police car behind, behind me. Behind okay. Me. So I slowly down, slowly down because there was a police car behind me. Me detuve porque había un policía, un carro de policía detrás de mí. Okay. So we have another example right here, which says the dog is behind the postman. El perro está atrás del cartero. Postman. Now, is there any question, guys? Preguntas hasta el momento? So far, so good. Todo bien hasta el momento? Yes. Great. Now, let's move on to the next one. In here, God, this is slow. Okay. Here we have between. Between normally refers to something that is in the middle of two objects or things or places. What does it mean? ¿Qué significa? Between significa en medio o entre. Entre, between, en medio o entre. Entre, I'm sorry. So, normalmente lo vamos a utilizar para referirnos a algo que está en medio de dos objetos, cosas o lugares, entre o en medio, ¿ok? So we have some, some other examples here. Jorge Luis Castaneda, can you please go ahead and help me with number one? There are mountains between Chile and Argentina. Okay, there are mountains between Chile and Argentina. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, Christian Lopez, go ahead, Christian, and help me with number two. Christian, oh my God, Christian, you're always having problems. All right. So, Rebecca de Benavides, go ahead with number two then. The number five is between the number four and six. Okay, thank you very much. And let me see, a volunteer for the last one. Hello. Sorry? I'm sorry, did someone say anything? Alguien dijo algo? Elena. Elena, go ahead, Elena. There is, I see the English channel between England and France. Okay, thank you very much. There is a C, the English channel between England and France. Now we also have the example right here in the picture which it says, the bone is between the two dogs. El hueso está en medio de los dos perros. So, is there any question with between? Preguntas con between, or are we clear with that? Or any word, alguna palabra that you did not understand? No. Okay, so that's clear then. So we're gonna move on to the next part, guys. And let me just check. Here, we have another one that is next to, beside. Next to and beside. What's the meaning of those? Ambos significan lo mismo. They mean the same thing. Significan la misma cosa. It usually refers to a thing or person that is at the side of another thing. Se refiere cuando una cosa o persona está a un lado de otra cosa. So it means next to, a la par, and beside es junto a, which is the same thing, a la par. So for example, we have at the wedding, en la boda, the bride stands next to the groom. La novia se para a la par del novio. The bride stands next to the groom. Number two, guards stand next to the entrance of the bank. Los guardias se paran 
a la par de la entrada del banco. He walked, he walked beside me as we went down the street. Él caminó junto a mí mientras bajábamos la calle. Okay? The last one. In this part of the town, there isn't a footpath beside the road. So you have to be careful. En esta parte del pueblo, no hay una acera junto a la calle. So tienes que ser cuidadoso. So you have to be careful. And obviously, the example that we have on the, on the picture, it says, the dog is next to the bones. El perro está junto a los huesos. Now, does any one of you have any question or no? If not, I'm going to move on. Yes. You have a question? Yes. What's your question? No hay nada. Oh. We have actually two. No hay alguna. No hay alguna para ocupar next to o beside algo específico. O se puede ocupar independientemente cualquiera de los dos. Either or, sí, cualquiera de los dos. No hay algo que diga en esta situación vas a utilizar beside, en esta vas a utilizar next to. No. Ambos significan lo mismo. Sometimes, eh, hay veces, podríamos decir que son sinónimos, ¿ok? Si utilizas una o la otra, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So, Julio, what's your question? Ese era lo mismo. Oh, yeah. the same question. Ok. So, uh, yes, it doesn't matter. As it says here, como podemos ver acá, it doesn't mean the same thing. Significan lo mismo. So we, we can use either or, and that won't be a problem. No va a ser ningún problema. So we have another one here. And this one, esta de acá, no es muy vista o no es muy conocida o no es muy utilizada in the English language. But... Is still necessary for you to know. Siempre es necesario que la sepa. What is the pronunciation? We say above. Above. And this one, over. Above and over. So as it says here, above and over have a similar meaning. Tienen un significado similar. Similar meaning. They both mean at a higher position than X. Una posición alta. But above normally refers being directly, vertically above you. What does it mean? ¿Qué significa? Yo voy a utilizar above cuando algo está encima de mí en una posición vertical. Vertically. ¿Ok? For example, let's suppose... Supongámonos que ahí donde ustedes están, arriba de ustedes, hay un light. Está una luz o un, uh, un foco, a light. So we can say, the light ball, it's above me. El foco está encima de mí. ¿Por qué estamos en línea vertical? ¿Ok? The difference, la diferencia entre above y over, ambos tienen un significado similar. Over... Es que tú lo tienes encima, encima tuyo, o está literalmente encima de algo. En cambio, above está encima, pero en una posición más alta en sentido vertical. Do we understand? Si ¿Sí entendemos la diferencia, do we understand the difference? Yes. Yes. Ok. What about the others? Solamente escucho dos confirmaciones. So, supongo. Yes. Okay. Great. So, thanks for letting me know. Here we have also. I'm sorry. Solo para, para confirmar. Above tiene que ser sobre, sobre mí más alto. O yeah. encima. De, Está vertical. sobre tuyo. Y una above. posición más alta. Uh -huh. y, y, y la otra. Over. Sobre mí. No, no, no. Toca. So, sobre ti no. Está sobre algo. Puede estar sobre ti o sobre no. tu cabeza. 
pero está sobre tu cabeza. No hay una posición más alta. ¿Ok? Sino que ah, bueno. sobre de algo. Puede estar sobre la mesa, sobre el teléfono, sobre la computadora, sobre el libro, pero está sobre algo. No está una posición más alta. Ah, bueno. Ok. Sí, All right. So here we have, it says, planes normally fly above the clouds. Los aviones normalmente vuelan encima de las nubes, the clouds. There is a ceiling above you. Hay un cielo falso encima de ti. There is a halo over my head. Hay una aureola sobre mi cabeza. Un angelito, vea. There's a halo over my head. So, we put a sun umbrella over the table so we wouldn't get so hot. Which it says, ponemos una sombrilla sobre la mesa de tal manera que no sentiremos el calor. So our neighbors in the apartment above us are really noisy. Los vecinos en el departamento encima de nosotros son muy ruidosos, are very noisy. Now, as we can see here on the pictures, aquí tenemos unos ejemplos a little bit clear, let's say. Now, uh, we have, uh, aquí tenemos como el contrario, let's say. Because if I say the bone is above the dog, es como yo digo el, el hueso está encima del perro. The, bob is a, uh, the, the bone is above the dog. But if I say the dog is under the bow, the bone, el perro está debajo del hueso, under. Now, over, este sería el contrario. So we say, we say, the blue dog is over the fire hydrant. El perro azul está encima del, um, I don't know how we say this in Spanish. No sé cómo lo llamamos a esto en español, really. Toma de agua. Uh, toma de agua. Hidra hidrante, he escuchado. Creo. Hidrante también. Hidrante, okay. So we're, we're going to call it hidrante. So we are going to say the blue dog is over the fire hydrant. El perro azul está encima del hidrante de fuego. And we say the fire hydrant is below the blue dog. Y el hidrante de fuego está bajo del perro azul. So we have the, the against. We can see the similarities that we have and which one you can use for one situation and which other you can use for another situation. Now, with the information that I just said, questions, alguna pregunta que alguien tenga? Or it's clear? ¿Sí ¿Está claro? Is it clear? Yes. All right, so I'm gonna take that yes or it for everyone. I, I'm hoping that everyone is understanding. If you are not understanding, please ask questions, pregunte. Haga las preguntas que sean necesarias para que puedan entender. Profesor. I'm sorry. What? Yo tengo muchas preguntas, pero voy manejando en este momento. Okay. So, so no problem. Sí. So you can... uh, uh -huh. eh, voy a ver si o, o de más tarde o el día de mañana le voy a escribir para ver si me puede ayudar a, a, a responder esas preguntas. Sure, no problem, no problem, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Yo tengo una pregunta de under y below. Okay, no, go ahead. No, ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Si es, se ven en la misma posición en el dibujo, pero no sé cuál es la... Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, let, let me explain. So over, dijimos que over era algo que estaba encima, right? Encima, pero literalmente encima de algo. No hay una posición arriba como above. Now... Below es cuando estás, el, eso está abajo, literalmente tú, la cosa que está encima es lo que está abajo. No sé si me entiendes. 
It's like, for example, let me show you this. Uh, this is a charger. Este es un cargador. I put it over my hand. Lo pongo encima de mi mano. Entonces, lo que está abajo es mi mano. Entonces, eso que está literalmente abajo, ahí voy a usar below. So, yo puedo decir, the charger is over my hand. And here, in this situation, I'm going to say, my hand is below the charger. Si enten, entendimos, understand a little bit. Si, it's clear. Well, I hope so. All right, so let's move on then. If there's no any other question, we're going to move on to the next one. And here we have the practice then. So if there's no questions, alguien que tenga otra pregunta before we move on to the practice. Preguntas antes de irnos a la practice. Teacher. Yes, Rebecca. Eh, en el caso de above y under, eh, ¿cómo sería? Oh, okay. Es que no me quedó muy claro. Yeah, sure, no problem. So we have a bow. Sabemos Above es algo que está en una posición like arriba, ¿no? Eh, si sí está encima, pero hay una distancia. No está literalmente encima tuyo. ¿Ok? Ah, está más arriba. Like, like above. So we say above, que significa que hay una posición hacia abajo también. No estás literalmente abajo de esa cosa, sino que hacia abajo hay una, una cierta um, distance. Distancia. So, en ese caso, cuando vemos situaciones así, yo les decía el foco. Supongámonos que estamos, la like we are right now, que estamos abajo de un foco. So, I could say, the light ball, el foco is above me. Sí, el foco está encima de mí, porque yo estoy aquí abajo, pero hay una distancia hacia arriba y eso está encima de mí. Now, entonces yo voy a decir que yo, I am under, que yo estoy abajo del foco. Porque siempre hay una distancia desde arriba hasta abajo. Distance, lo único uh, es la distancia. Gracias. All right. Gracias, teacher. Okay, so if there's no any other question, we're going to move on exactly to the, to the practice and... Here we have, guys, you know what you have to do. In this case, I need you to take a screenshot with your phone, computer, or whatever device you are using. You let me know when you do it so I can move on to number two. Can I move on to number two? Yes. Here we have. Yes. So you let me know and I can move yes. number three. And if that is okay, so I'm going to, oh, well, that's a pretty much the last one. So we just have three in this case. So if you got guys the screenshots, I will stop sharing and we are going to move on to the breakout rooms. Let's see. And in this case, I will move to this group. Let's see, three and here, here and here, here. All right, so please, guys, go ahead and join your groups. I will be checking. Voy a estar verificando ahí. Go ahead, please.
Eh, Fisher, ¿nos puede dar permiso para ocupar la, la, la pantalla? Yes, I did it already. You can do it right now. Try it. Bueno, la primera creo que sería Under It's 